Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. For a minute there, I forgot my channel name. <laughs> it's Friday. Well, anyway, welcome back to the second shelf. Um, as you are undoubtedly aware of, 8 March, so Monday a week from now, um, we celebrate International Women's Day. But what you might not be aware of is that the whole month of March is Women's History Month, at least in the US, the UK, Australia, and some other countries. Not Canada. They celebrate Women's History Month in September. Don't ask me why. But we go just go with the majority, majority because it's International Women's Day on the 8th of March. So March is, for me, Women's History Month. And that means that we look at the contribution of women uh, uh, throughout history, science, technology, politics, whatever, or women that had been ignored and neglected. And I thought in order to celebrate Women's History Month, I'll make a video and recommend five books or maybe it's more than five, uh, we'll see, um, that have as a topic a certain history event or the, the impact of women on a certain segment of history or what have you. So it's a combination of uh, nonfiction and fiction. So I think there is something for everybody. And the first book is nonfiction and the topic falls into the category Forgotten Women. I mean, not anymore. After you read the book, Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly, which was published in 2016. And it's about the female, black female mathematicians um, who worked for NASA during the 1960s and who had an important role in the space program, in the landing on the moon, and before this book, I don't think anybody ever talked about them. They are real persons like Margaret Vaughan, uh, the gifted mathematician, and an engineer, Margaret Jackson. Um, and they all worked there. And without them, I very much doubt that in 1969, uh, Neil Armstrong would have landed on the moon. So this is a fantastic, really well-written book about... Um, set in the 1960s, of course, if I didn't say that, but that's obvious if it's about NASA and the pre preparation for the uh, landing on the moon and in the middle of the Cold War and, you know, the, uh, the Sputnik is up there. And so we really have to combine our efforts. We, I mean, the United States, so that we will win this space race. It's interesting to read that Computer was, first of all, um, uh, not a machine, but a human being, somebody who computed, who counted. Um, and it was considered, you know, not very um, high profile or uh, advanced. And, and so women did it and black women did it, you know, anyway. Read the book if you haven't, and of course afterwards you will watch the movie because the movie is also really great. Um, about it, it combines the women in the book, uh, or compresses, I should rather say, the women in the book to three main characters. But still, it's it's really educational and it's fun to watch, and the book is great as well. Next up is fiction, uh, historical fiction at that. Uh, Natalie Haynes' book, A Thousand Ships, which was published, I think, in 2019. And I have should prepare better and look this up. Yes, 2019. Um, and this is more, um, falls more in the category female history for once told from a female perspective, because it's about um, Greek mythology, um, the women in the book, a lot of the women, at least during the Trojan War, are well-known figures, you know, Helen of Troy, or Penelope, the wife of Odysseus, or Clytemnestra. Um, so th it's not that these women are forgotten, or have been forgotten, like uh, the women in Hidden Figures, but most of the stories we know, the women are not center, don't take center stage. 
the story is always told from the male perspective, whether it's the uh, Odyssey uh, by Homer or the Iliad or other uh, books about Greek mythology. The man is, you know, the main figure, and there are some women sprinkled here and there, wives and daughters, and you know, but not playing uh, a major role. And certainly the story is not told from their perspective. And that's what Natalie Haynes does. She did that already in her previous book uh, about uh, Jocasta's children. Um, and in this one, she uh, gives a wide range of mythological figures, like I mentioned Helen, uh, uh, Helen of Troy or Clytemnestra, but also goddesses like Gaia, um, and the story is told from their perspective, and it gives a different view on the Trojan War. I really thought it was um, an, an excellent book, um, despite maybe the fact that if you have so many voices, um, it lacks a bit of depth maybe, but still as a whole, it really gives you a good and very different perspective on an important part of uh, Greek mythology. So I can certainly recommend that for uh, Women's History Month. For the third recommendation, uh, we stay with fiction, but we return uh, to the same time frame as the first book, Hidden Figures, so the Cold War, and again to the topic of forgotten women. Um, and I, the recommendation is Laura Prescott's debut novel, The Secrets We Kept, which was published last year. Um, the book is a spy novel, but not a straightforward spy novel as you might expect it if you read this genre a lot. Uh, so don't be disappointed if it's much more, it's much a broader um, tapestry than your, you know, straightforward spy novel. Um, uh, it's about, the frame of the book is um, uh, Dr. Shivago, the famous novel by Boris Pasternak, which was not allowed to be published in the Soviet Union um, and was smuggled out of the Soviet Union uh, to the West to be published there. And the CIA was involved in this, uh, in, you know, in smuggling the book out. So that the one part is set in the uh, Russia, in the Soviet Union, and is about Pasternak and his wife and the role of his wife. So again, a forgotten woman, because her role was somewhat important, um, and also his mistress. So there are two women. Uh, but it, the, the, the bigger part of the book is about two women who started as secretaries for the CIA and were then recruited as spies and how they tried to navigate this very, very male uh, dominated world, um, uh, the role of the woman and sexism in the workplace and what it meant to be a woman in that work environment and what happened to these two main characters, these main women um, in over the course of time. I know that the, um, the premise and especially this idea of Dr. Shivago's, uh, Dr. Shivago, the book, uh, didn't work for everybody, uh, but I, I just really loved it. I thought it was excellent. It was really well written. It was suspenseful enough to qualify as a spy book, but it also really addressed the issue of the role of women and the difficulty women faced during that time to be recognized as valuable members of an organization, the CIA, but it could be any organization. The next book uh, is nonfiction again, uh, a memoir. And the 2014 memoir, Redefining Realness, by Janet Mock. Uh, Janet Mock is a transgender author born in Honolulu and then moved to the U.S., to New York City. And this memoir is um, the, the story of her quest for her own identity. And I can't believe I have to say this, but I included this book because... Transgender women are women. Yes, they are. 
And it's certainly a forgotten story because not much of women's history deals with transgender women. So I thought uh, it is absolutely necessary to include at least one book um, that tackles the issue of trans being transgender and the quest, like I said, the quest for identity. This is a very personal account. It's of course a memoir and it's always personal, but it's um, Janet Mock makes it very clear from the outset that she tells her own very personal subjective story. So she is not claiming that she is um, that her experience is the experience of all transgender people or all transgender women. It's her story. Uh, uh, and her uh, transition from being the firstborn son of an Hawaiian family to becoming the transgender woman Janet Mark she is now. Um, I thought it was well written, engaging, um, an important insight uh, for me because it's it's an experience, a life experience that of course I don't have. Um, and I, like I said, I thought it was really important if we're talking about women's history and if we're celebrating Women's History Month to also include transgender women. The fifth book um, is fiction again, historical fiction set in the very early part of the 20th century. Uh, and that book is Pip Williams, The Dictionary of Lost Words. Uh, Pip Williams was born in London, but she lives in Australia and considers herself, and so I consider her an Australian author. Um, the book centers around, um, or, or combines, I should rather say, um, the true history of the making of the first Oxford Dictionary um, and a fictionalized uh, female um, young girl when the book opens uh, whose father works for that, for the making of that dictionary. So the father is a lexic lexicographer. Is that the word? Well, anyway, he, you know, he, he works for making the dictionary. So we learn, we we follow Esme, and that's um, the the girl's name. The book opens when she's, you know, ten years old, something like that, um, and she plays under the table where all the men sit and write down all these important words that have to be included in the dictionary, and she learns over time that there are words that are not included, like bondmate and other words that she then collects. And most of these words have to do something to do uh, with the female experience. They are all related to women somehow. And so uh, Esme is, if you want to say uh, a summary uh, or give a summary, sort of her lifelong quest um, is the search for these lost words. Uh, words related to women and what that means. I absolutely adored this book. Um, I thought the combination of this real life event, the making of this first dictionary and the fictionalized uh, figure of Esme worked really well together. Um, it told something about the position of women uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, but also um, women the position of women in language. So if we talk about forgotten women and women's history, we also have to realize that oftentimes um, it's also a matter of which words we include or which words we think is are important and more in general how we talk about people. So this is certainly um, for lovers of historical fiction, whether it's for uh, Women's History Month or not, uh, but this is a perfect pick. And I think um, the UK edition will come out in April, so that's a little late for Women's History Month, but the book is still worthwhile in April. So these were five books that I can recommend if you want to read more or learn something about women's history, whether it's in March or later in the year. Uh, but I also have two bonus books because I'm well aware of the fact that there are plenty of uh, readathons in uh, March. Um, and like I said, there are plenty. I picked two. And sorry, Sean, the Irish readathon <laughs> is not included. But at first, I picked uh, March of the Mammoth. Uh, that is a readathon in which you are uh, challenged to read really, really big books. And they are not talking books over 400 or 500 pages. No, 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 no. I mean, 
huge books like 800 plus. Um, and I have just the book for you that also fits um, um, the March as Women's History Month, and that is the uh, new biography, relatively new, um, because it's uh, in in was published in 2020 by Heather Clark, Red Comet, and it's a biography um, of Sylvia Plath, the poet, and it's 1132 pages. So if you are participating in March of the Mammoth, you didn't, you don't have a book yet, and you are interested after you see, saw this video about um, Women's History Month, Heather Clark read comment about Sylvia Plath. And the other readathon uh, that I want to recommend a book for is um, March Mystery Madness, in which you read books, mystery books, and thrillers, and they're tons of prompts. I, if I remember, I will try to leave at least one announcement video uh, down below, also for the uh, March of the Mammoth. So if you're not familiar with the readathon, that you can have a look at the announcement video. Uh, but March uh, Midst of Madness is an event, I think now for the sixth, fifth, sixth time or something, in which you read mysteries. And like I said, you have all kinds of prompts. And I suggest uh, a mystery that also fits my uh, goal uh, to promote books uh, in March that fit, you know, uh, Women's History Month. And that is the crime series by Sujata Massey, um, the Pervin Mystery series. And the first one, Pervin Mystery, is the main protagonist, a female detective. It's set in the 1920s in India. And the first book is called The Widows of Malabar Hill. Um, and that for March Mystery Madness, I looked it up, that fits two prompts, place and person. So there you go. Um, and you learn something about uh, women uh, in um, she's not a detective, by the way, she's a lawyer, I'm sorry, uh, a Pervin mystery. And you learn something about the position of women uh, during that time in India uh, because she couldn't, uh, Pervin couldn't become a barrister because women weren't allowed to be, you know, appear before court. You know the split system um, in, in uh, the UK and other Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, law systems where you have barristers, the ones with the wig, who go in front of the judge and then you have solicitors who prepare the case and who have the contact with the client. So as a woman, she could only become a solicitor anyway. And then she solves all kinds of mystery. And these, this first book has to do with an inheritance and some widows and there's something fishy about the inheritance. Uh, they, the books are lovely. They are a delight to read, but they are also educational and you learn something about the history of women for sure. Anyway, so these were my five recommendations plus two bonus recommendations for people who um, do the Mammoth, March of the Mammoth or March Mystery Madness readathons. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as always, I'm looking forward uh, to talking to you in the comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.